Hello all of my friends. Thank you so much for visiting me on the uh, today on this uh, lily. It's a white lily and so um, we are painting a white flower uh, in this video and it is really relatively easy for this one for um, all of you guys to follow along. Uh, I will have a um, pencil drawing of this um, Okay, let me move this. Uh, let me move this along so that it can be all in the in view. Okay, this white lily, and then I have a I have a bud, and there's one that's partially open, and some leaf up here. And uh, so when you um, and when you go over to my blog post uh, to find the pencil drawing, so that you can trace along. Um, and when you get the pencil drawing, just um, pay attention to. Um, because it's a, um, the painting itself is quite easy to follow, but the line drawing is a little bit, because we have this blossom and this blossom, and Lily's blossom a little bit more complicated because they like to twist and turn, and they have uh, waves on them, which make them very very pretty to um, look at. And but uh, it is a little bit of uh, tricky to get all the lines straight. So just uh, keep that. Uh, drawing with you as a reference as you paint then you will know where the line goes and then uh, I will, of course will have a uh, will have the, this finished painting on the corner for you guys to follow along and so I really think that this is uh, relatively easy and fun and uh, we're gonna leave highlight and uh, talk about how to um, do some of the veins of their leaves because the Lily's veins has a lot of leaves and after I left uh, you guys um, all I did is uh, I go in and uh, do some of the background painting just to bring out the whiteness of the of the lilies and uh, and we're gonna do some of the the stems of the stamens here and uh, those are that's uh, just a little trick uh, for that and it will be fun for you to come and paint along with me and so uh, I hope you really enjoyed this and uh, yeah you know where to fetch my a drawing for you to trace if you are looking for something like that and go visit my blog and my shop is also over there and also um, uh, please uh, do subscribe to me and uh, I will feel like you guys enjoy uh, my painting or the style which I paint and teach and uh, and so that will be a great motivation for me if you would not forget to subscribe to me anyway all right and uh, oh I want to just barely mention that um, last time, Lena, one of my subscriber, told me where to find this and on Amazon and it arrived a couple days ago. And this is the Corner Sore Happy Dog Detail. The one that I call it my trusty uh, Chinese uh, brush. And they're the same thing, exactly the same. And you can see. And so when they first come, they have a glue on the tip, on the whole thing here. And all you have to do is soak it in some uh, warm water uh, for a little bit uh, like I don't, I don't know maybe 10-15 minutes and then it will uh, become loosened and then you rinse it again and that should be at that point it will be good enough to go and I can uh, I guess I can tell you this really come to a point but this guy has been with me for over 10 years maybe 15 years I don't even remember uh, and so I certainly did not get this at, um, at uh, Amazon but they look the same and so if you're interested, I have the link. Um, oh, I may have the link with my daisies. Okay, I think it's with my daisies painting. That is uh, going to come up this way. It's going to be uh, be uh, 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 um, uploaded this week. Okay, and so anyway, I hope you have fun following along. And uh, if you really like to, and usually we don't put back, you know, this lid, you know, we it's just as good as, we probably can throw it away or use it for something. But you can see that if you try, that will totally destroy your brush, right? I guess if you have a pencil and you really want to protect the tip, you might want to do that. But I usually don't protect my pencil like that. But this is the pencil that I show you that I got too. And it's really good because it do very, very, very fine line. It's a 0 0.3. Anyway, okay, let's get started with the painting. And uh, yeah, I will, uh, you'll paint along with me and have fun, okay? Okay, we get started and um, just a thing to tell you today <laughs> um, there's one blossom too uh, 
one bird, two bird, and I tried, I'm going to try to have some in the background too. And so um, the painting is relatively big, so I need to um, be sure to rotate them, you know. And I'm looking at the camera, so I think I can do that. And uh, and if I do get out of bound or whatever you call that, then you guys please forgive me, okay? And uh, so let's uh, dive right into this big blossom over here first. This one, okay, I'm trying to make sure. Okay, the the color that we use today are not, um, it is my, oops, it is my green mix. That um, So mainly sap green because um, I want it to be a lighter green touch. It will be a little bit more than reality. And then I'm going to use perlene green. And then uh, of course use the indigo. And then I'll just tell you more about the color as we go, okay? Um, and today our lily, we are also painting uh, white flower, but Lily is a little bit more fun because as the um, apart from the white flower, there are some. Um, this white flower Lily has uh, has uh, some green in it, so that will facilitate us a little bit. Okay, and now I'm coming down, uh, gently soften it, but um, I. I'm trying to accomplish that you can still see the line, okay? Now, over here, the leaf uh, fold, right? And so the back of the leaf, on the other side of the leaf, I just wanted to be sure I painted that. So you can see that before I forget, right? You know, sometimes I just uh, leave that out and that wouldn't be very good, okay? And um, uh, now I'm dipping in some of the indigo plus the perlene green mix. And I'm going to, oh, was I out of the camera? Okay, I promise I'll try my very, very best to not do that, okay? And a little bit of a shadowy area over here, okay? And I'll explain as I go why I do things like that. Actually, I should probably change into a, a smaller brush, like my um, my little uh, detail, but I will, uh, I will do that, okay? in a minute. So since I have the bigger brush in my hand, what I'm going to do is after I intensify this area just a little bit. Now this flow brush, actually my um, new, uh, oh, I would have, I probably would have talked to you about that. My new um, Happy Dot uh, came, but I don't have time to um, to take the glue out of the Happy Dot yet. And so I'm still using, the reason why I use this flow brush is because it doesn't take as much water, okay? And I, and this is the painting that I do not, probably do not want to have as much water, okay? Now what I'm dipping in is, uh, I will show you guys just a little bit now that we're in the beginning, dipping in a little bit of uh, this perlene green. I pick up some of the, you know, the leftover sap green over here, and uh, I'm going to, uh, try to do the middle part where uh, it's more of a shadowy part and uh, where the the stem and the pollens are right the pollens of the I think that that's why my my, uh, my voice is kind of coarse it's because of the pollens that are floating out there but that's okay I put up with it I uh, I think that is well well worth putting up with because spring is here and um, it's very nice, but however, we're still hoping for a lot more water. Um, I think my deers, the deers, uh, well, they ate uh, my two loops, okay? Now, so what I did is I put on some pigment over there, and then I just kind of softened this area, okay? Because in nature, that's the way it is. You can see that there's uh, some uh, deeper color coming out, you know, and then it softened to... Um, you know, a very soft edge, okay? And now we're gonna have a sta a stamen coming out there. So we, you, you know, we will go work on that. This is really relatively quite easy. Now I put on some more pigment while this area is still kind of damp, you know, and just intensify that, okay? I'm just doing it now so I don't have to worry about it. Now I can also drop some more pigment of, um, of the sap green over here just to make this uh, more pronounced, okay? This is relatively easy, okay? And I hope that you can trust me and go ahead and try it because um, you can, uh, I don't think that this will be out in time for Mother's Day because Mother's Day is next week. And um, I know the mother like Lily. Okay, well, they sell Lily in Lowe's, right? And Home Depot and some of the 
garden. Now, if this is wet, so I won't touch it anymore. Okay, let's come over here and do the middle of this uh, this lily, this blossom. Okay, be sure I am in. Okay, and uh, and they were selling at Lowe's and um, uh, and Home Depot during the you know I. I like to go to Lowe's and Home Depot because I'm a flower person and a plant person. Um, so I do a lot of things myself and I just love doing that. And uh, I saw the lily and uh, so I went over there and said, ah, maybe I should buy one. Um, and they smell so good, so, so good. Wow. No wonder we all love love it. You know, every year at this time, uh, it will. when I go and look at them, it remind me of how good they smell. Not all flowers look good and smell good you know they're white flowers and i think they sold a lot of them because i see people just uh just uh just very excited you know you can see that the ladies and the maybe they were getting it uh, ready for yeah uh, for um, mother's day for their mom that could be okay and i think that that is uh that is good enough okay because it just uh, you can pull it out more but the, in nature that's not how it really looks so i'm just going to do the best that I can and stick with, you know, what I see, okay? And uh, and stick with my practice, okay? Now, so what I'm going to do is while I'm here, I'm going to do a little bit. Now, this is a tube. You can see the tube of the flower, okay? And so mo most of that area has a lot of shadow on it, but I'm going to do just a thin layer of, um, of uh, sap green because it does have the green color too, okay? And then I'll come in and do the shadow here but I don't want to forget this, uh, the green, okay? So I just put in a very dilute pigment and I'm gonna come in and dilute it some more. You know, and well, I'm not trying to dilute it. I'm actually trying to soften it, you know, so you have some of the color, but not so intense. The reason why is, you know, we always talk about, now I'm mixing a, I'm mixing a, uh, the indigo with a little bit of the perlene green, okay? And I'm going to do the shadow over here the shadow part because this with this petal the folding you know will come alive to you as you uh, get the shadow okay now when this uh, petal um, casts a shadow onto the tubular part of uh, herself you know of the plant herself it should have a little bit of an edge over an edge edge over here wow my voice is really kind of going <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> You know, the price I pay for having spring around, right? I really like spring here in Utah. Um, you know, people in Utah, they like um, they like their winter, our winter, because then they can go skiing, okay? So I'm trying not to touch it too much, okay? Now, this petal also casts a shadow right there, okay? So I'm doing the same mix. It's a very, very dilute mix. Um, the only challenge, I think, with this painting that we have doing today is make sure that we see all the lines that we draw, okay? Of course, this line drawing will be for, provided for you on my blog post, okay, when the post is up. And um, and I wanna do a shadow on this line right here, okay? Just a little suggestion of a shadow over there, okay? Now this painting will be provided for you um, as you, um, uh, on my blog post. And so there are a lot of lines and so, um, just uh, pay attention as you paint, I guess, you know, so you won't uh, miss the line. And, uh, and um, but if that happened, then that is not a big deal, okay? Now this, this petal over here will make this area kind of dark, okay? So I'm gonna go in with a dilute, you know, kind of, um, kind of, uh, kind of uh, sap green, okay? And first, you know, just paint that area with a little bit of sap green, okay? And so while that is still wet, I will um, first, I will first uh, soften the edge, okay? So what I do is I use a clean, a clean uh, brush and I'll get the, pull the color out and soften the edge over here, which I have shown you in my, and then I'm going in with my uh, little perlene green and just make that area a little bit darker. Can you see that? And so it established, you know, in between the, the petal here, petal here, there's like a little dark area, okay? And then uh, right now, go back to the sap green and there's nothing much to it, okay? I'm just gonna pick up some of the pigment that's already on this ceramic dish, okay? And I will just, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, come over here and 
follow the middle line. And so most of the painting part will be the middle line here. And I'm going to use the sap green actually as a shadow because I don't want the whole flower to be too dark, okay? So that's what I'm doing, I'm using. So since I have practiced it, you know, I'm going to sip, sip, sip and do the middle part, okay? But like I always say, as for you, you don't have to worry about it. You know, you can just take um, your time, pause it, and you can even mute me. As long as you don't tell me, actually you can even tell me that you mute me. <laughs> because if you have listened to me a couple times, you know, I know that sometimes it gets kind of uh, boring or annoying, you know, what I tell you, maybe have to listen to my story two, three times, you know, and so, yeah, feel free to do that, okay, don't worry about it, I do totally understand, but I'm sure you guys do, <laughs> and that's fine, you know, I understand, I, I mute myself sometimes, you know, when I'm going through and looking at what I'm teaching, and that's okay, you know, so I use the, the green for the middle part, okay, just, uh, some here and there, so I don't uh, make this, uh, you know, so much into a green flower, but mostly trying to, you know, keep the integrity, okay? And so I, what I'm doing is just, I'm picking up, I don't even go into this very intense area, whatever is around, you know, there's a little bit of pigment, and then I'll just do that, okay? So, um, oh, I'm so, I'm so happy that I just remember to move that, you know, so you guys can see it, okay? And so the same thing, use a little green, you know, because the direction of the center, if you put a line there and the people can see that that's the direction of the center, it actually help the, help the way you see how the petal uh, bends, okay? And so this is the only, because the petal of, um, of, uh, of uh, Lily is so big, okay? It's so big and so, um, and I'm uh, painting a relatively bigger size painting. And so that's why I keep telling you, I have to uh, keep reminding myself to move move my painting, okay? Now I just dip in some of this, this uh, watery dried up liquid, uh, dried up pigment, okay? And I'm doing the middle. Now, because this petal is on the back, so I'll just say, oh, okay, I will just uh, make it a little bit of a darker green, okay? Now I'm going to, while I'm there, I'm going to come in here and this uh, like dry up, you know, leftover paint because I won't dilute, right? I'm gonna come over here and make the back a little bit, a little bit more shadowy so that you can see that this petal is uh, towards the back, okay? So the pace is, uh, because I have such a big, you know, I have two big, um, okay, now I think that's all the showing of my palette. There's nothing to it, you know, I'm just gonna lay it down, okay? So I won't be blocking you or mistakenly blocking you, okay? So the petal over there, you know, it has some muted, muted uh, mix of perlene green and indigo on it, okay? I also leave some broken line over there um, so that I can uh, use the background. Not going to be a lot of background, but use the background to, um, uh, to uh, you know, blend in with that area, right? So that the petal is uh, pushed back even more in your eyes, okay? Now, so I'm picking some perlene green because there's also another folding of the petal, okay? So I wanted to make sure I remember while I'm here to get that uh, petal, you know, and then I dry my pen, I dry my brush or clean it, okay? Clean it in my water over here. And then I uh, dry it on the, on my little uh, little towel that I show you so many times, okay? So that makes sure it's the same as this one right here, right? It's the turning of the leaf, the turning of the petal. So I just wanted to make sure, and then I'm doing all those in front of you now, okay? I'm picking up some perlene green and I wanna do this turning one, okay? Now sometime what I'll do is I'll just put the pigment in the corner, okay? Just as little as that, okay? And then I will pull it out pull it out and then, uh, you know, so it, you know, like, like what I said earlier, right? Just trying to preserve the integrity of the white flower. So the flower will, you know, because before we know it, after we mess with it so much, <laughs> if we can call it mess, then it will almost become a, you know, a green flower. And we don't want to do that. But, you know, for art, we will tolerate that a little bit, I think, 
you know. Now, there's a, there's a, like, we're looking at this pedal over here, okay? There's a curve over here. And with the curve, we want to put a little bit of shadow, okay? So the shadow should be kind of bluish, you know? So I'm putting, do you see how light the tone of the pigment I just put in? And then I soften it, okay? So that you can see that. But I'm sure that if you see this uh, more in person, you'll be able to see the pigment. But we're going to try to let you see that um, as much as we can. Okay, now with this pedal, there's a curve over here, okay? Now this is how we how we um, accentuate curve. Is we I put a line of pigment right there and then I soften it. Okay? And that will, you know, make the flower kind of bend and curve, okay? It's just, uh, it is very, very nice to do that on something like this as a lily, okay? So there's another curve and I'm doing that, okay? Just follow the curve line and just put a line of pigment there and then soften it. Soften it with a clean, a clean brush, okay? Now there's another curve um, like that. Okay, now there's a, uh, there's a line over here. Now what sometimes you can do is you can use, you know, your color to uh, just kind of almost like outline outline the the line okay so you can see it a little bit better and we do that okay but not um you know not too much outline then it become an outline of a of a flower okay and we can do that of course we can but i don't i don't with my daisy and i'm not planning to do that with my uh okay it's the same thing okay there's a little curve and so i put some pigment on there okay now i need to make this part also a little bit darker okay so the same thing maybe it was indigo i think i was just did some indigo okay and then we'll come back and play with those and so now the flower is beginning to take shape and you can see the line here and there okay but mainly we wanted to be sure that we use the background okay you use the background to help us um the background to help us bring out the whiteness of the flower not outlining the flower if that makes sense you know because you know if we uh, uh, don't think about it too much we can uh, just let it uh, get away with uh, from us right and just uh you know outline here outline there and pretty soon the whole flower will be like you use a pencil to draw almost you know and we don't want that effect unless we do but I think, you know, for as for me, I'm not trying to accomplish that effect. Okay, now there's a curve over here, okay? So slight pigment. I pick up some pigment, okay? A slight pigment to indicate a curve because whenever there's a curve, there should be a little bit of a change of, um, you know, shadow. But the shadow, nobody is casting any shadow to this curve, okay? So all we do is like we just uh, slightly put a shadow right there. Okay, so that's why I keep coming because um, I've um, talked about that before. If there's a cast shadow, then there is a sharper line. Okay, there's a sharper line when there's a cast shadow. But when the shadow is not cast, when it's just the bending of a petal in nature, then there is still a shadow there, but then you want it to have a soft line. Okay, and that's like a really, really good thing to remember. Uh, to remember that. Okay, now this um, over here kind of look puffy. Okay, now it's up to you. You can actually leave it look puffy uh, because as the petal turn from the middle of the flower, it can be puffy. Okay, but I wanted to push it back a little bit. It's not so puffy. So I'm just dropping a little bit of the bluish uh, indigo and uh, perlene green mix. Okay, and you can see that as soon as you drop a little bit of color, then it doesn't look as puffy anymore. This is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to see how we artists um, accomplish effects, you know, for painting flowers and such, okay? Now, if you don't want this uh, to be too puffy, then you can do the same thing. Now, I don't want this part to be too puffy, so I'm going to do the little bit of the perlene and the indigo mix, very, very light, light wash, okay? And I'm coming in here, and then quickly I will come and disperse the color, okay? And so it doesn't look too puff up, okay? But that one, I, I kind of wanted to leave it a little bit puffed up. But we will see, okay? We will see as we go. And if I don't like it, then we can always we can always push it back, okay? With some shadow color, okay? Some shadowy color over there. Okay, can you see that this painting is uh, coming alive? Uh, the flower is coming alive, okay? Now, this area is a little bit bent. 
Um, so I'm going to put in some shadow over there, okay? Some shadow over this little area, just to push this, uh, to pu uh, push, sorry, push that puffiness back a little bit. Okay, so I just drop in some color, you know, and not, you know, I, I kind of come in and swipe with a clean brush, and then I'm gonna drop in some indigo color, okay, in there. So hopefully it will give you the effect that that uh, petal actually has been pushed back over here a little bit, okay? And uh, I'm looking at my uh, <laughs> I'm looking at my practice, and so I'm just uh, seeing that if I have forgotten. Okay, now over here, there's a between this petal. Okay, this petal definitely will have has a shadow over here. Okay, so let's just uh, paint that. We can use the indigo blue. Okay, just make sure that we have a shadow and that separate the two petal for us okay now you will see that i will come in and you know and so do you see that how you bring out this petal and push back that one okay i'm gonna use my uh eraser quite a bit because you know as i draw the i actually draw this on here um well i have a little bit of tracing because i already had drawn the original one that was my practice okay and uh and so i uh sometimes i'm a little bit heavy heavy-handed with my drawing okay sometimes I am sometimes I'm not I don't know why I do that and sometimes I don't do that <laughs> it just depends on the day you know and so if there's like too much uh, of the pencil mark I would like to okay now over I would like to come and soften that okay over here uh, there's also a there should also be a shadowy area okay so I'm using the green mix the same green mix okay when i say green mix i always like i'm either mixing perlene green with uh sap green or i'm just like you know so as you follow along you just take your time okay don't try to go too fast not as fast as i do okay so that you it will be more enjoyable to you that way okay now there's a leaf and we'll deal with the leaf in a minute okay the leaf also help us now uh the uh, the stamen where the things uh, carry the pollen, okay. The middle one, I have decided that we're going to use more burnt umber. Okay, I wanted to do that because I wanted to show you while this painting, I'm on this blossom, the middle part over there, how we're going to separate that. That is the only thing that you really actually. So I just pick up some um, burnt umber, okay. I'm uh, putting in the middle part, okay. I can see that I'm not. Like I need uh, to pick up a little bit more because I want the pigment to be a little intense, okay? Now, so I did the burn number over here. And then uh, what I'm doing is, while this is still wet, I'm going to go into my Gwinagodon Burn Orange, okay? And put a little bit in there. Now, this is the main statement in the middle, okay? Now, it's really funny. So on the reverse statement, that's the little, uh, you, you will see me do it now, okay? I'm just gonna use burn umber, no, I burn, uh, connect the burn orange, and then put burn umber. So they're kind of reverse, okay? Because uh, this is the, the one that I always show you guys, you know, this is my quinacodone burn orange, okay? So I'm gonna go pick it up, but not with this brush. I'm gonna change to, with this brush right here, the one that is number two, a number two brush, a synthetic brush, okay? I'm gonna just, uh, okay, I'll just show you while I'm here. Now you can see that when you pull out the burn orange color, okay, it's kind of pasty, because some of you had asked me, you know, to show, you know, how I pick up, okay? Now I'm gonna use that. And uh, I don't have any drawing because I'm looking at my um, I'm looking at my practice, and I would prefer to just just put this because this is easy enough. Okay, now so do you see how I put in the 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 top of the statement? Okay, that's the quinacridone burn orange. Okay, and while I have so much pigment in my brush, you know I guess I am kind of cheap. I don't want to uh, I don't want to lose all the pigment. Now I go clean my brush now. Okay, clean my brush and I'm going out to the burn umber. And then I will pull out the burn umber. So what I literally did is I am mixing color just like this one, but in the reverse order, okay? In the reverse order. Because I I think, you know, I look and I look and I... um, This is pretty true to color, okay? So I'm just encouraging it with a clean brush, encouraging them the color to mix, okay? So let's do... 
uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them. So we can, you can watch me do it six times, okay? On this one, and I'll do six times on the other one. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay, now, so you know, Kathy, I don't like monotonous things, okay? So I'm like going to make this at uh, the top part of statement going this way and that way, okay? Okay, going this way, and then I make one going that way, okay? Because, um, you know, I told you that I had the uh, uh, the lily, and I, you know, I have to observe, right? I have to go observe and see what is happening with everything. And so I see that they do, but they probably be a little mon more monotonous, okay? So burn umber and let them, and just say, hey, you guys make your color there and just be pretty for me, okay? Just cooperate and be pretty for me. And they are doing that. Okay, now let's uh, do the rest. And I'm picking up the same thing, okay? Sorry, I'm just getting the pace. It'll take me a little bit longer. Now be sure that you don't need to go as fast as I do, okay? Ah, <sighs> Kathy's always pushing for time, but that's okay. It's okay. Ah, where should we put the sixth one? Ah, I think over here, okay? And so what's happening uh, with my yard is that um, I uh, I was very happy. The You know, I have these like really nice tulip. I'll tell you in a second where I get them. And, um, you know, the deer always like to eat my tulips, right? Or the tulips. And so I just did put burn on and let them mix right there, okay? Now, while this is still wet, we'll leave it alone and we're gonna work on over here, okay? Now, I don't have lines over here. Um, because it's not necessary and if you were to put the lines in in the beginning it will probably be gone okay now just for your sake I will show you if you are not quite sure then you can put lines right here okay just put one in the middle and make sure that it fan out from the from this uh, bottom part okay and so you can just two three uh, three to four lines okay and make sure you fan out like a fan Okay, now that you probably need to do while you're painting instead of from the beginning. And so I probably, I might include that or I might not. Okay, we will see. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my detail brush and go into the, go into, this is the indigo. Okay, ooh, let's not have a lot of pigment landed. That's why I don't pull that out because I don't want to <laughs> have accident and make mistake. Okay, now I'll pull this out. Okay. I'll put, um, I'm going to go get some more pigment because, you know, my little brush, it uh, always fight with me. Almost every single time, huh? You hear Kathy complain, but I truly do love the little brush, so I'm not going to complain too much, okay? Now, you see that I have put one, two, three, three, four lines of indigo, okay? Now, I'm going to come in and soften them right away. Now, why do I do that? Because when you do that, you give the illusion that there are um you're giving like but don't uh pack them up too tightly okay you give the illusion that there are uh, petals coming out okay i have a uh, drop water drop everywhere over here okay now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to intensify this bottom area a little bit more with the indigo color okay and then i'll just let this now do you see stems then as i'm doing this you see one two three three stems coming up right um, and so that is enough, okay? Because there will be more stamen, the stems of the stamen coming behind it. But, you know, we're just assuming that three of them is all you can see. When you draw, uh, when you uh, paint four lines, then you can, uh, no, I'm going to disperse this on the edge a little bit, okay? Just kind of disperse it a little bit. So the disbursement over here, make that become part of the background, okay? Now, you see that? Okay, so you can see some stems coming out, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're expecting this to be just the same indigo, I mean, uh, the same uh, little uh, brush, and then we can use, uh, yeah, let's just use some sap green, okay, over here, okay? And then you are painting the stem. And almost like you're trying to meet the stem from up here meeting the bottom, but you don't have to let them meet, okay? And then you come and soften it. And then your eyes will come in and kind of fill out the uh, fill out the the broken line, okay? Now this is the main one. I hope you can see that, okay? 
and then I'm drawing a, I'm actually putting a stem leading to it, okay? And that's this one, the same thing, okay? I'm putting a little, little strict line, and then I'm coming in right away to soften it, okay? And so what that does is it just gives you, you know, you can see that I just painted the stem, but I don't need to paint it all the way down, okay? I really don't. And uh, maybe it's just, um, yeah, the one in the front is just a little bit. Okay, and so it will your eye your eye will actually feel out the difference in the line. Okay, so let's keep doing that, and uh, you can see me, you know, do this, you know. So you know, as the statement come out, they kind of bend. Okay, that's very gracious. Okay, so we will just uh, kind of make a little bit of a curved line for it to bend into them into this area. Okay, now I'm going to come in and darken more of that area if I remember. Okay. And so what's happening out there now? I'm just putting a little bit of a squiggly, okay? A little bit of a bending stems over there, okay? And then that's enough, okay? Your eyes will kind of fill out and you will see that there's a cluster of stem over there. And then with this part, it's kind of magical, you know? With this part, you know, it will just uh, kind of make you kind of see that, um, you know, those are kind of connected, but they're not really, okay? Uh, okay, so now I'm going to do a light indigo and I'm going to darken this area a little bit because I see that there seems to be a need for that, okay? And so just put a light, light wash, okay? And then I will come out and soften it, okay? This, this part, you know, over here might be a little bit harder for a beginner, you know, but it's, so if you find it a little bit hard, don't worry about it, okay? You know, just uh, uh, maybe go back and look at what I did, you know. And so now this uh, blossom right here is almost done. And I don't see that there's anything else until I come in and do the background, okay. And so we will uh, uh, continue working on this other blossom, okay, and finish this one up um, and just leave that one to dry, okay. Now this is my number two brush, okay. And I'm going to use, uh, pick up some of the more of the sap green and do the middle, and do the, the little line that's going up the middle, okay? Okay, the same as what I did earlier. I'm just going to, you know, put some pigment on there and then uh, come in and soften it, okay? And you see that I have a broken line over there. I don't even have the edge of that petal, you know? So uh, maybe we'll just use the background then to finish this area, huh? We can do that, okay? No stress over there, okay? Now I'm going in to do that one. And so, um, I have uh, a lot of uh, really pretty tulips outside and uh, I got it from this place called the Thanksgiving Point, which is um, a lady, she went over, um, she's, uh, her husband is the founder of Word Perfect, and so I guess she must like tulips. So when her husband, now there's a little curve over here and I'm going to put a shadow over there, okay? A little bit of pink gray mixed with the perlene green, okay? And uh, just put a little line over there. Put a little line over there and then come soften it. So she got a lot of um, tulips from Holland. And then every year there's like, I, I think she charged, charged maybe about $20 per person or $8, I don't remember, you know, for people to go in and see all of her tulips. And I went a couple times. Um, and, uh, but at the end of the season, she also, um, she doesn't uh, keep all of the, the tulips bulbs she sells some of the the smaller one, okay? Because I don't know, maybe they dig them out. And so one year, my friend said, hey, I'm going to Thanksgiving Point to get tulips. Do you want some? And I said, yes, I'll just pay you back. So she went and picked, picked a bunch of tulips. And you don't get to pick which kind or whatever first come, first serve or whatever they wanted to sell you. Okay, there's a bend, right? And so I'm painting the back side, the back side of this petal because it bent over there, okay? And so she, uh, she got me some... Uh, tulips and that was really nice and uh, the first year I didn't think anything of it and I just planted the bulb and one morning I woke up and I saw there was a hole <laughs> okay so this is the middle vein okay and so I saw that there's a hole and I say oh okay uh, <laughs> our little 
uh, squirrel in the neighborhood had visited me, okay? I want this to have a little bit of shadow over here, okay? So I'm just putting a little bit. And so in order to save it, because I don't think she sell it for that much money, okay? It was very, very little. But still, I don't want to, I don't want to lose my, <laughs> I don't want to lose my, uh, uh, okay, a little bit of shadow on this band over here, okay? There's a curve and you will be able to see it more clearly when you go pick up my, um, my drawing, okay? So I'm just doing the same thing, doing shadow when there's a curve, okay? And so she, uh, and I think this one will cast a little bit shadow over here. This petal cast a little bit, so I need a little bit of bluish green, okay? And doing the cast shadow, okay? Doing the cast shadow line, okay? And so I got smart and I say, okay, I need, uh, so I put wire on top, not uh, not uh, thick wire, those plastic wire you can get from Lowe's. <sighs> okay, so let's see. Now, I think this one is the one that is casting the... Okay, sorry. This uh, petal is the one that is casting the shadow over here, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing and cast a little bit of the shadow over there, okay? Now, like I told you, cast shadow, you can have a... Uh, a little bit of a, a, a harsh line, okay? And if that happened, don't worry about it because cast shadow is like that. But I still like to soften it just a little bit, you know, not too harsh, okay? Now there's a little curve over here, okay? So I'm gonna come in with the blue and green liquid more, you know, because I like it blue and green, you know, um, instead of just blue. Okay, let that be a little bit of shadow and make it do a little bend, okay? And so I'm thinking that this part needs to be a little bit shadowy too, okay? So do the same mix of uh, uh, indigo and perlene green. And so that was really good. And then in the spring, guess who come and visit and eat them? They think that, they think that I am very kind to them. I actually go to Holland and buy them. Uh, it's the deer. They think I actually go to Holland because I love the deer so much so they can come and eat my tulips. <laughs> and so, but they eat the, what they did is they eat the, they eat the stem, they eat the flowers, the bud, and they eat the leaves too, okay? But this, the, usually in the previous year, I don't see them eating the leaves, but I think now I'm going to go in and do this. Uh, oh, and I think I should put a little bit of shadow. How about over here, okay? Just because the, the the flower, the petal bent, and I want it to, I want it to be able to, uh, yeah, to put a little bit of shadow over here, okay. And so, uh, this year I I thought, oh, okay, the petal they eat uh, one of them. I didn't cover it well, because I thought, oh, the bud has already formed, so I can actually take off my net. Well, was I wrong? Next morning they eat all of my five um, tulip head. And so I was very, very sad. And then uh, I say, well, now they're they're done because they eat the five tulip heads and I still have other tulip that were well covered, you know. Okay, a little bit more, but not too intense, okay? Not too intense. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit of um, intense line of uh, perlene green over there. Okay, so you can see that. You can see the turning of the petal over there. And so I take the net off and then the next day I come out and then they actually eat all the leaves. And I think that it's because the, the previous day I have um, actually, um, okay, now uh, the side petals are almost done, okay? So we need to work on this uh, area a little bit, okay? And I'm going to let the, let the little uh, top of the stamen come down here a little more. Okay, now remember this one. This one is actually the uh, burnt umber. And then quinacridone orange, okay? More burnt umber on this one, okay? You can lay in, like, see that color is not intense enough. You see how I uh, I correct myself, okay? I just want to say that because uh, I don't want you guys to actually ever feel like every time I touch the paint and it's perfect, you know, but my, my brain is actually correcting problems a lot as I go, okay? Okay, so I'm going to let that, okay, now I'm going to follow, now this is my um, practice one, I'm going to follow the, the, uh, what I did over there with the, with the top of the stamen, okay, now this is the reverse, okay, right, just like what we did over this blossom, over there we're going to uh, do uh, quinacridone burn orange first, and then we're going to let the, let the burn umber mix in, okay, mix in the color, 
And so I came out and they were all eaten. The leaves also. Now, sometimes it bothers me. I know that it is a loss when I when I didn't when I make the mistake, you know, and didn't do as much of a protective job for the tulips. But I I cut my loss and I say, okay, so this year I won't be able to see my uh, now I'm going into the burn umber and pick up a dilute kind of dilute pigment of burn umber and then put it there, close out the shape and let it mix color, okay? And so I say, okay, well, what is done is, is done. And so I don't get to see that five pretty, pretty sunset flower, sunset color for, uh, flower tulips, okay? And I'm not okay, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> it's already eaten, right? And so, uh, but when they eat the leaves, then I get a little upset because the leaves is what make the photosynthesis, right? Get it ready for next year. So I will have a good bloom. And so, um, I don't feel like that pigment was intense enough, so I might come in and intensify the, the pigment. We'll see, okay? We'll see how the mix go, okay? So that's burn, burn uh, orange, and then with a little bit of uh, burn umber to close out the shape. <laughs> and so one, two, three, four, so I need six, so I'm gonna do, um, like say, one here and one there, okay? And, uh, and so I was um, very sad. So I covered the other, I have a one pink color, one yellow flower, and then another pink mix. And so uh, thank you to my friend, you know, I, I, I just have that group. I don't want to, because we have so many um, deer around here and we have a dog and he's a mixed breed of some kind of a dog. Not not me, but my neighbor has it and his name is Gunner. And I wish he would be more vicious as when he was young. <laughs> he wasn't vicious, he wouldn't kill a deer, he would just chase them chase them off the hill. It's just lovely to watch them when they were young, how he just took off and, and chased them off, you know, uh, because it was beautiful the way they, the deer run and the way uh, the dog run. But I haven't seen him do that. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, of a little bit of a water here, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in more sap green, mix of sap green and uh, perline, okay? And just let them, let this uh, area intensify a little bit, okay? Just come out a little bit more, okay? And so now there's all these harsh lines, and of course I'm gonna come in and soften it. Now this place is wet right now. I'm not coming in with my with my uh, detail brush yet to put in the stem, okay? I'm just gonna leave that area alone and work on these, but you know what though? I think I, uh, just a minute, let me check out. So, let's see, let me, Ooh, I wasn't, I'm not focused. Okay, let me set the focus back. Okay, there you go. And um, I, what I'm going to do is I, I, uh, I thought that this is easier, okay? And so I just want to soften that a little bit more. Not need to. Um, so I'm going to do this butt for you, okay? And this, uh, the butt of the, the butt of the lily, they can actually be a little bit more green, okay? So I don't want to, um, you know, have this video go on forever. So I'm going to do a bud and maybe also do a, do this bud over here, make sure I am in the frame, okay? And then do a couple leaves and so that uh, you guys can see. Okay, so now it's mainly sap green, okay? So you guys can see uh, how, how they all come together, okay? Now I'm using my flow brush. I'm changing back to my flow brush because you know why? Over here, when I'm doing this bud, I'm going to need some more pigment, but then I'm going to leave a big, huge area of... Um... Now I'm going to break that up into uh, the whole bud into two segments, okay? So that it's, you know, for you to follow, it's easier to manage the, the liquid content of the water, okay? Now clean my brush and I'm going to come here and pull out the color, okay? Pull out the color. You see how I randomly skip white area, okay? I'm gonna pull out the color so it look pretty. And it look like there's a big highlight, okay? And now this is still a little bit wet. And so I'm going to try to go in the perline, maybe? Yes, let's try it. Go into perline and drop some because now we're, what, what are we back to? We're back to the form again, okay? The form, it makes sure that it is like, it look like an almond instead of a flat oval, right? Okay? So as we darken this area, it will make the make the the whole bud turns, okay? And so uh, I'm going to go in with indigo later, okay? Now uh, I'm just gonna go straight in and use a darker 
a mixture of perlene green and mix with the sap green and do the other side, okay? The other side of the bud. Okay, so since the other side is not in the sun, so I'm not gonna skip, and maybe I will skip some, but probably we'll see, okay? Now these two sides, okay, they can actually mix and mingle a little bit. That's why I'm willing to uh, put in the color while I am, while this side is still a little bit wet, okay? Because it can have that soft line and it can have that hard line and it's, it's actually quite pretty, okay? Now, this uh, seems like it's disjointed a little bit, but don't worry, okay? I'm going to come in and use lines to make them appear like, okay, now I'm dropping in some indigo color, the same as I drop over there, okay? I'm gonna even bring in some indigo because this is how I make the form, okay? The form and make it look like an almond instead of, a, you know, almost almond, not really quite almond, uh, you know, uh, instead of a little, uh, instead of just an oval, okay? And let the color mix and then maybe come in here and soften it and it's not quite necessary. Soften that area a little bit, okay? Now, I'm going to let this uh, dry, okay? And uh, so, should I do a leaf? Uh, I'm gonna let this dry. There's a, there's a leaf right here and that's kind of the main leaf. And as I'm using the leaf, oh, okay, I, I, I can see that the stem over here is a little too thick. As I, we're using the leaf to bring out the petal, to bring out the petal of this flower, okay? So, I think that I should do that so that you can see that, okay? And the leaf of the um, of lily is a little bit, um, so I'm gonna pick up a lot of pigment of the perlene green, okay? The What I'm saying is the leaf is a little bit darker, okay? The leaves are a little bit darker than the flower, uh, than, the, uh, than the buds. And so we can uh, actually, okay, so I'm going along this line and I'm just going to do a first wash, a first layer, okay, of this leaf. Okay, so I'm going around the the flower and I need to be just a little bit careful, okay? The back, the back of that petal, that petal of the flower, okay? Just a little bit. Now, and as I come over here, I'm out of the danger zone, <laughs> if I may call that, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start skipping the line I'm gonna start skipping because uh, and uh, bring out the vein, okay? Let you see a little bit of the vein of the of the leaves, okay? And then I'm going to do this side, okay? The same thing. I'm gonna start skipping now. This is the center vein over here, okay? And so I will just kind of skip here and there so that you can see, okay? You can see that there is veins and. Uh, don't worry about it though, if it is too light, like what I can see, uh, I mean too white, I'm going to go in with some sap green, okay? And while it's still wet, I'm coming in with the sap green and let it mix the color, okay? Now I'm not going to touch those veins now, okay? I will come in and show you in a minute what I'm going to do with the vein. Because if I touch the vein, then the part will get wet and, um, and it won't uh, do what I wanted it to do, okay? Now I can also, I want some indigo over here you know, and I can still do that because this uh, area is actually quite wet. I can almost tell you that as of right now, there's a puddle. Okay, but I'm not afraid of puddle because I'm watching it. If I forgot to watch it, then I could be a little afraid. Okay, still leaving those veins. Okay, over there. Okay, now so this is good enough for me and I'm going to let it mix color on the leaves. Okay, now let's do a little bit of the of the of the stem over here for you, okay? Now, so I'm going to go in with my perlene green, okay, which is the darker green than the sap green, okay? I'm gonna come over here. I think I have a lot of pigment. Maybe I'll regret this. Uh, regret meaning there's maybe too much pigment, but I'm going to go for it for now, okay? And I'm going to uh, go into the shadowy part, uh, assuming the sun is coming down this way, okay? I'm going into the shadowy part, not all the way to the not all the way touching that leaf yet because I we can do that. We have the luxuries, okay, with these kind of stems, okay. Now I'm gonna cleaning the brush and it's clean, okay, it's clean, and then I'm pulling ever so slightly out of the. Now I can see that I need to go in and uh, because uh, my drawing the vein was too thick, and I don't like it, okay. And so now I'm going to 
pull out the color of the perlene pigment okay and while this area is still wet i'm going to go into my sap green and just uh, use some pigment and drop into it okay and i don't know if uh, you can see it ah uh, what is that okay oh that is the other leaf okay i you know sometimes i have to desify my own drawing okay i have the pencil line actually right there now as i'm going i can see that my pencil line is like uh, i have made the stem too thick in the beginning with my pencil line so i'll just go in and i will scrub uh, i will erase it when uh, everything is dry not in the danger zone anymore more anymore okay i'm gonna drop some of that indigo color because right here there's always a shadow so right there next to a bud or next to a flower is always darker okay now uh, now i'm quite happy because there's a leaf coming it's not going to be this lonely okay now it looks kind of lonely but there's going to be a leaf coming out of here oh and actually a leaf i can see i draw another leaf and so we're gonna deal with that okay i'm rotating my palette a little bit uh, maybe I shouldn't do that, yeah, because uh, it will either make you dizzy or you can't follow, okay? So with this tubular area of that flower, that flower bud, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do my same thing, okay? Do my stem. I'm going to put pearling green over there, okay? And then I use a clean, I clean this brush off, there's no pigment, nothing. I'm going to pulling it out, okay? Pull it out, pull it out. Okay, and then I'm going to, while this is still wet, this is how I do stems, okay? I'm going to put in some sap green, okay? Lighter green. That's just the way I do it, you know? I, I hope that you like to follow that, but you don't have to, okay? Okay, so you see that? And then I'm going to come in and drop some indigo in the place where it connects itself, okay? And then I'm going to let the color just mingle and mix over there for now, okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do is do this area because I think it's worthwhile for you guys to see me do another time, okay? And one more time, what I'm going to do over there, I'm going to use my little, little brush, okay? The same thing as this uh, flower, okay? I'm going to go in and take uh, some uh, indigo pigment, okay? Now, the same way, okay? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put one, two, uh, three, and four, okay? And then I'm gonna sweep away, uh, straight away, clean my, clean my little brush, and then I'm gonna come in and scrub it out. Or you can call it scrub it out or soften it, okay? That's not enough. Yeah, my little brush always uh, fight with me. <laughs> okay? I'm gonna just like soften it right now, okay? Now, but as I soften, I lost the intensity of the, of the, of this area, right? And so I'm just coming in and uh, make sure that it looks dark and, uh, okay? Darker down there, okay? And so the little uh, four stems are still over there, okay? I'm gonna let that go, you know, and soften it. So it looks like there's four, four stems coming out there, okay? I just like to do four, you can do five, you know, or six if you want, but usually they are not right next to each other. They're overlapping, so I thought that four might be enough, okay? Now, so I'm happy with it. And then I'm doing the same thing. I'm going up here, okay? Just like the other blossom. I'm using, uh, oh yeah, let's use a lighter green, like the perlene green mixed with sap, okay? And then I'm going to start doing that, okay? The stamen, right? Just like what I do on the other side, okay? Doesn't have to come all the way down. You can pull it kind of all the way down if you want it to. Okay, but your eye will feel out the will feel out the difference. Okay, and then I'm gonna do oh the main one, the one that is darker. Okay, so that in every some one of the stamen there is a there is a there is a a stem, you know, coming with it. Okay, okay, same thing over there. Okay, I hope that is not confusing for you guys. You know. Because some of this stem go to the back, okay? Because they kind of cluster together, right? In a cluster, like like the way I have all the brushes bundle up together, right? They're like that. Ooh, so sorry, so sorry. They're kind of like that, and so some of them are in the front, some of them are in the back, okay? If that uh, actually, wow, I I hate bumping. I really hate bumping my uh, camera, but my camera is so close. You know, sometimes I just do that, and if I notice it, I will always correct myself so I don't make you guys uh, dizzy or something, you know. 
but sometimes I don't notice, you know. And then when I edit my video, that was that would be too late, and I say, oh, okay, I bump it. <laughs> and then I felt really sorry. And I don't mean to do that to you guys, but it just happened. Okay, and so it kind of go down to the bottom. Okay. That's how I like to paint it. Okay, and this one I want it. Okay, not picking up pigment again. Okay, I want this one to curve a little bit. Okay, curve around a little bit. Okay, so I just let it curve. And if you pull some of the quinacridone burnt orange pigment out, don't sweat it. Okay, just let it go because you know this is where they carry the pollen, right? And of course, the pollen will get onto the stem, right? For sure, it will. And so, if the quinacridone burnt orange kind of get onto your stem, we don't sweat it. Okay, and so we'll just let that one float. But I want it to have a little bit of a sharper. Yeah, there you go. A little bit of a sharper line over there okay so that is very nice right if i may call it pretty myself okay now this this part is kind of so i'm going to um i use some indigo over here and accentuate that cup the same cup that i did over here okay i'm going to accentuate that cup oh okay where did it go <laughs> okay just have the cup kind of have a little bit of a darker color over here okay <clears throat> and then soften it. So while I was um, while I was uh, fighting uh, with my uh, with my net and stuff, you know, I make a I cut my finger, and that's why I had to wear a bandaid. I don't want my finger to like uh, all heal before I make a video, right? And so that's why, you know, I hope you guys uh, you know don't mind me wearing a bandaid. It doesn't affect the way I paint, though, I find that. Okay, so this is looking good. Now, I'm going to show you this, okay, because I don't want to leave you guys yet. Um, uh, I wanted to show you how am I going to um, make this a little bit of a, a prettier, okay? So now I'm going to use my uh, my little detail brush again, okay? Going into my perline, okay? And this is very intense pigment right now on my on my brush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do lines over here, okay? I'm going to do some lines over here, here and there, okay? Not a lot. And skip them, skip them, meaning not lining up the whole thing, okay? I, I put some over here, some over here, skip this area, okay? And that will be more true to the nature. And then come over here and straightway, lightly, lightly soften them. Okay, so uh, to the point that way you can still see the line, okay? Okay, and that looks pretty. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for that side. Now, I, I, I kind of wanted to do the top over here a little bit. And so, yeah. And then make it do a little triangle coming down here, okay? I can even uh, do a little bit of uh, the line over here, just a little, just so that I, I make it a little bit cleaner, okay? Now, now I'm going to uh, go with my brush, with my little detail brush, clean it, and go pick up some sap green, okay? And do a, just a tiny bit over here. Okay, I just put some pigment, but a very light wash, okay? And then I'm going to come in and pull out the color. Gently, okay, pull out the color. You can practice doing this kind of thing, okay? And then you can see the line of the, the real intent of the line um, of a bud will show in front of your eye, eye but not uh, too harsh, okay? Now, so I put some over there and then I'm gonna slightly come in and pull it out, okay? So the line is still there, but not a lot, okay? Not a lot, but not so soft that you can't see the line, okay? Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now I promise you, I'll show you what I do with this area, okay? Very, very simple because it's not supposed to be white, it's supposed to be sap green, okay? So I go in here after it's dry and then I put a layer of sap green just on top of the, the line that I skipped earlier, okay? And that, so that will give you the impression of a leaf, okay? It's very, very pretty, isn't it? Okay, now I will do this but after I turn off the, the, um, the camera, okay? Um, just on my own. There's a, this little one and it will be very, very easy. You see that, okay? So all I'm going to do is I will preserve the white because this bud is partly opening, partly opening and it had lost the green. 
of the bud that is fully open. Okay. Now that I have a, I have a leaf right here. I have a leaf right here, which is a turning leaf. Okay. This is the one that I'm going to do before I say goodbye to you. Okay. With you guys. Okay. I'm going to do this one. There's a little leaf over here. And then I will just put in the background and then you'll be able to see that. But since this is a twisted leaf, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, do this with you. Okay. Now, remember, I told you that I have a I have a line that was too thick, okay? So now I'm coming in here and erase that line. I'm so brave. <laughs> I really am, okay? And then there's another leaf on the back, okay? And you'll be able to see that. There's a leaf right here and then there's a stem right here, okay? I'm just telling you guys um, <clears throat> what will you won't be seeing me painting, okay? So I'm back to my flow brush, okay? Here's my flow brush, okay? Uh, with quite a, you know, it's not too dry now, okay? Not too dry, but this is uh, some of the thing that you have to you have to uh, experience yourself. Okay, I'm coming in the same thing. I'm pull pulling some of the uh, perlene green pigment. Okay, and I'm going in here. Now I'm doing the same thing. Okay, I'm painting it. Okay, this whole area. Okay, and I'm skipping line as I paint. Okay, I'm skipping line as I paint. And the line that I am skipping is the veins, other veins, okay? So I'm skipping it as I paint. I need, look like I need more pigment. I need more pigment over there. Okay, I'm skipping. And then I'll do the same thing with this, okay? And so this is actually quite, quite uh, wet right now, okay? I'm skipping that. Okay, so you can see some vein on there, right? Isn't that kind of pretty? I think it's kind of pretty. And then I, I can even go into some sap green and then I put some over here, okay? But it will be a mix, right? Because now since it's still wet, of course I'm mixing color, okay? I think that I'm quite happy with the way it looks, okay? Now let's do the turning side, okay? Um, let's do a uh, lighter color then. Let's do that, okay? Because since it's turning, we have to have a contrast in the color in the front and the back, okay? So I'm just using sap green, okay? And I'm putting that right there to indicate that this is the back side of the leaf and that is the front side of the leaf. Now, the area is still wet, okay? But they can mix a little bit. But when they're dried, I will come in with an indigo and put a line right there, okay? Now, I'm just gonna call it brave and say, hey, this area. Now, this this white area is actually, um, is actually a highlight, okay? So I'm not going to put in a uh, sap green color, okay? I just uh, lay some water there to soften the line. But I'm just touching this and I say, okay, good enough, okay? It's dry enough, so I'm doing the same thing. Okay, good, some sap green. And fill out the, fill out the line. That I just leave, okay? And then I put in a, I'll go in and pick up some indigo color, okay? And quite a solid pigment. And then make sure that I drop some over here, okay? Just so that your leaf is very, very colorful and very pleasing. And pretty okay now um i think that is it and then uh, so like what i say you know i walk you a little bit uh, of what i'm going to do i'm just going to now these two leaves are the one that is more detailed and this area i'm not going to okay these leaves that i have and this but is going to a little bit loose color okay a little bit of loose color and then i will show you it should be very very easy um, I'm feeling a little bit that I should take a little time to do the butt, you know, with you, okay? So I'm going to do this one, okay? I, I actually plan to stop right now, but I'm going to, you know, I just don't want to leave you guys hanging, okay? And so I'm going to go in here. Now this, um, this one, okay, the line that I put in here, I'm going to soften it right away, okay? Because now I'm also worrying about um, not being so dark as this one, because this one needs to be... It's already going to pick up some of the white color, okay? So I'm just going to let it, okay? And while I'm down here, while it's still wet, I'm putting a little bit of um, of a darker color, okay? And then I'm going to come over here on the side and do a stripe of pigment over here of the sap green, okay? And then a straight way, I'm going to come in 
and pull it out to the edge, okay? Pull it out. So this is the edge right here, okay? So I just pull that out, okay? And then over here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the sap green right here to show you, okay? What I'm gonna do, just a little bit right here, okay? You see that? And then I'm gonna pull this up, you know, with a clean brush, okay? I'm just gonna pull this up so that it will, um, it will still be a white flower instead of a, instead of a green bud, okay? Okay, and then while it's still wet, I'm dropping in some. Do you see that? I just drop in some perline, and then it, it just like kinda, <laughs> it just kinda, uh, and then a, a little bit of darker green, you know, just to separate the petals, okay? Because there's like a few petals here. So I just wanted to indicate that to you. Wow, that was a very, very liquidy, okay? And just uh, separate that, okay? So that's all the but that, that there is, but I felt like I need to be responsible and show you. Now, what I'm going to do is to bring out this bud, I'm actually going to do the background for you a little bit. I'm going to use the perlene green on my, on my brush now, okay? And this is the background I'm doing, okay? And as I'm doing that, you can see that that, that bud is showing up, right? And then I straight away really quick, I need to come in and soften it, okay? Soften the line of that. Okay, because I don't want to just have a, you know, a brush of green right next to the bud, right? And so I'm going to come in and soften it as much as I can, okay? And then the background, when we come in later, then we will just put in maybe some indigo or some other color to, you know, further soften this line over here, okay? But you can see that how with the background, it bring out the flower, the shape of the flower. But we're not going to do a lot of background today, okay? So don't worry, because um, I just wanted to, uh, this to be a very, very clean, uh, clean painting, okay? Uh, very clean, uh, just seeing the white of the, the lily, okay? So now I have everything soft over there, okay? So that you guys won't be like too confused and say, what did she do after she left us, okay? And I'll explain that a little bit more when I do the intro. And so, uh, since this painting is so big, I will, uh, of course, I'll step back and take a picture, okay? But now I wanted you to see everything that we have done and the blossoms are done, okay? And mainly it's the background, okay? And a couple more leaves and then we'll be, and then you'll be able to follow along with this painting, okay? Well, thank you so much. And uh, please subscribe if you really like my, um, and want to encourage my work. And uh, I'm very grateful that I can paint with you, even though my, my thumb is injured. <laughs> and then uh, and please subscribe to me. More paintings are coming. And uh, I will see you in my next painting. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.